Hi, I am Sophia, and this is my story. I have always considered myself a simple woman. My life revolved around my daughter, the only family I had left after my husband walked out on us when she was just a toddler. I made sure that she never felt the absence of a father, pouring all my energy into being both parents for her. I raised her in a beautiful home, surrounded by a lush garden I tended to daily. The flowers, the trees, and the vegetables I grew were my pride, but they couldn't fill the void of loneliness after my daughter, Emily, left to start her own life. When Emily got married, I was happy for her, truly. She married Michael, a tall, handsome, and successful man who seemed to adore her. Every weekend, they would visit me, and those were the moments I lived for. I'd cook for them, we'd laugh, and for a few days, the house would feel full again. Emily was my world, and though I had a good life, filled with the peace of my garden and the comfort of a well-kept home, there was a gnawing loneliness that always lingered once they left. One weekend changed everything. It started like any other, Emily called to let me know they were coming. I was thrilled, as usual, bustling around the house, cleaning, cooking, and preparing for their arrival. The next day, when they arrived, I greeted them with a warm hug, my heart swelling with joy to have them near. After their long drive, they went to rest while I busied myself in the kitchen, preparing lunch. That's when it happened, when the first spark ignited something I never expected. I was chopping vegetables when Michael came in for some water. We exchanged casual pleasantries, talking about the week and plans for the weekend. I reached for a pan on a high shelf, but the moment I stood on my toes, I lost my balance and slipped. Before I could hit the ground, Michael caught me. His hands were firm but gentle, and our eyes locked in a way they never had before. For a moment, I felt something strange, something I hadn't felt in years. It was like the air had thickened, making it hard to breathe. Are you okay? He asked, concern in his voice. I nodded, my heart racing for reasons I couldn't understand. From that moment, everything felt different. It was as if some invisible line had been crossed, and I could no longer look at Michael the same way. I tried to avoid eye contact with him for the rest of the day, but there was a tension between us that I couldn't shake. I could feel his eyes on me whenever Emily wasn't around, and worse, I found myself glancing at him more often than I should. Later that day, after lunch, I retreated to my room to think. My mind was racing, trying to make sense of what I had felt. It was absurd, wasn't it? Michael was my son-in-law, married to my daughter, the one person I loved more than anything. This wasn't right. But before I could collect my thoughts, there was a knock at the door. Come in, I said, assuming it was Emily. To my surprise, it was Michael. He walked in, looking slightly nervous, and I could tell from the way he hesitated that he didn't have a reason to be there. Do you need something? I asked, trying to keep my voice steady. He paused for a moment, then shook his head. No, I just, wanted to spend some time with you. I know you must get lonely sometimes. The way he said it, with such sincerity, caught me off guard. My heart softened. He wasn't just some man trying to be kind, he saw me, saw my loneliness, and in that moment, it felt like he was the only one who understood. We began talking, and what started as small talk soon turned into something deeper. He asked about my life, about how I felt being alone, and I found myself opening up to him in a way I hadn't with anyone in years. Before I knew it, we were sitting on the bed, our conversation flowing freely, as if we were old friends sharing secrets. There was a moment of silence, and when our eyes met again, the tension between us became unbearable. My heart raced, and in an instant, our lips met in a passionate kiss. It happened so quickly that I didn't have time to think, but once I realized what was happening, I pulled away, my heart pounding with guilt. This is wrong, I whispered, but even as I said the words, a part of me didn't want to stop. I hadn't felt this alive in years. I know, Michael said, his voice low, but I can't help it. I feel something for you. From that moment on, everything changed. 
We tried to keep our distance, but the pull between us was too strong. We found ourselves sneaking moments alone, sharing tender kisses when Emily wasn't looking, finding reasons to be near each other. It was wrong, and I knew it, but for the first time in a long time, I felt wanted, desired, and loved. That night, as I lay in bed, I couldn't stop thinking about him. I knew it had to end, that I was playing with fire, but when Michael slipped into my room, all of my resolve melted away. Are you crazy? I whispered, but he silenced me with a kiss. That night, we shared more than just stolen kisses. We talked for hours, pouring our hearts out to each other, and for the first time in years, I didn't feel alone. The next day, they left, and I was alone again, but something inside me had shifted. Michael and I began meeting in secret, first at coffee shops and then at my home when Emily wasn't around. Each time we met, I told myself it would be the last, but I couldn't stop. I had fallen for him, and the guilt was eating me alive. A few weekends later, when Emily called to say she wouldn't be able to visit, Michael suggested he come alone. I hesitated, but the thought of spending time with him was too tempting to resist. I should have known better. I should have known that things would fall apart. That weekend, I put on my best black dress, the one that made me feel young again. We danced in the living room, laughing, kissing, lost in our little world. It was perfect until the door swung open, and there stood Emily, frozen in shock. What's going on? She demanded, her voice shaking. And from when? Neither of us could speak. The guilt, the shame, it all came crashing down at that moment. Emily's face was a mixture of hurt and anger, and I could see her heart breaking before my eyes. After that night, everything changed. Emily stopped speaking to me, and within a week, she had filed for divorce. She moved out of their home, and I was left alone once more, this time with the crushing weight of guilt hanging over me. I had destroyed my daughter's life, and for what? A few stolen moments of happiness. In the weeks that followed, I ended things with Michael. It had to stop. I couldn't keep hurting the people I loved, no matter how much I had enjoyed the brief moments of passion and connection. I was alone again, but this time, it was different. I had lost not just my daughter, but the respect I had for myself. Looking back now, I realize the mistake I made. I let my loneliness consume me, and in doing so, I destroyed the one relationship that mattered most. Life has a way of teaching you lessons the hard way, and this was mine, sometimes, in our pursuit of happiness, we cross lines we never thought we would. But those moments of weakness come at a cost, and the price is often too high. If there's one thing I've learned from all of this, it's that love, real love, isn't about filling the emptiness inside us with fleeting moments of passion. It's about sacrifice, about doing what's right even when it's hard. And sometimes, it means letting go of the things we want most, for the sake of the people we love. I lost my daughter because I couldn't see that. I'll never get her back, but I can hope that one day, she'll understand that I made a mistake, one that I'll regret for the rest of my life. That's my story, and if I could give you one piece of advice, it would be this, never let your loneliness blind you to what's truly important. Because in the end, the choices we make out of desperation are often the ones that haunt us the most.